Well, this is going to be a pretty long video, probably. Probably. Because I'm going to go through all my steps in recording a song with a really full sound. I uh, had the question posed, can you, how full rock type sound can you get out of just a simple keyboard? And it was a very um, negative sounding question, like I couldn't do it or something. Uh, so, I happen to have this uh, Evanescence book from, I think it was the early 2000s. 2005, so it was mid 2000s. Uh, I'm gonna do one verse and one chorus of a song called Imaginary, and if you want to hear the real thing, just uh, YouTube Imaginary by Evanescence. I don't want to put the real thing on here because I don't have copyright issues with YouTube and I just don't feel like dealing with that. So, just gonna do one verse, one chorus, just as a test run here. And we'll see how full and how rock of a sound we can get. So, the good thing is, it gives me a tempo right there. I love when the sheet music gives me an actual tempo. So, I don't have to think very hard on that one. Tempo 76. Now, for a style, I need something that's got a hard hit to it, when I, especially when I switch with the autofill. When I start with, uh, you know, version A of a song. Let me back up. Let me find the rhythm here. Hold on. Okay. When you hit this auto main fill button, you get a... You get version A, which is a little bit smoother. A little softer. And then when you hit that, you get a little bridge kind of transition sound into a little harder of a sound. So, and that'll work really good for this, so, <laughs> wrong with keys. It's going to work perfect. So, here we go. I must pick the track I want to record on. What I want to do, I think, is I want to record the company sound, the drum rhythm, with a piano kind of just backup rhythm. So, something like, I'm going to go with the chords and just do something. something very simple in the background. I'm just going to play that drum rhythm starting on A and I'm just going to record on track one and accompaniment just to get the rhythm and this sort of piano background sound going. And we'll start literally on the thing. Now I've got so when I went to the chorus, I did hit the fill button, so it did its little transition into a harder sound. So we've got that done. That sounds like... So we're good. Now, let's add another layer here. Okay, for the second layer, I want to add a deep string sound. So let me find... like that. I'm actually going to shut the piano off while and record just on track two with accompaniment playing in the background so let's lose the piano so I don't hear it while recording and let's record this layer in. So that's recorded in. Uh, so now when I play that back, the three I've got so far. Okay, cool. For 
For my next trick, let's go to simple piano for track three, just to get the main melody down. I'll say piano, darn it. I'm just gonna record it with, um, well, I'll put the strings in the background while I record. And uh, just again, shut the piano off. I just really, cause that, when I do the final step of that, that piano's gonna be very, very low. It's just a little added something. And you'll see what I mean by that later. Because like I said, this is going to be a full process. Not just what this records, but then when we go to a computer and what we do with it there. So let's go with this and record just the main melody and just as a simple piano. I'm using a MIDI piano. So here we go. Ready? And... This layer, I want to do uh, a harder piano, honky tonk piano. But I want to add, I have it on a sticky note, I want to add dual layer. I want to add a dual voice of, it's on 285 male choir. So now, so we get that voice in the background. I think that's gonna add add some real depth to this. So now let's record that with the drums. Just that. Okay. So that, and that, and go. guitar was and this is something that we may doctor once we're in on the computer but let's overdriven guitar distorted guitar overdriven guitar I like it better and I'm just gonna create a real just a rhythm where it's like chorus, I'm going to do something like you know, create a real rhythm -y, real rock type sound. So let's record that in. Uh, I'm just going to play track three that has the basic piano. I don't want the whole thing. That's the beauty of recording with just certain tracks playing back. I don't want to hear the whole big thing coming at me while I'm trying to concentrate on one particular track. So I just want to hear the drums and the basic piano melody. I don't want to hear all the extra stuff, the strings, the hard melody that has the extra voices, the piano rhythm. I don't want all that coming at me in one shot while I'm trying to record. But just break it down to just give me the melody, the drums, and I'll add the guitar now. So here we go with that. And go. Okay, so now I'm going to put all that into the computer and work from there. It's a little complicated. There's no way in hell I would ever output this whole thing. Never would output this whole thing to one shot to a computer. I like control. I like all the tracks separated. I can adjust, which we'll show in a minute. So what I like to do is shut everybody off and just play one track at a time. All the way through recording. And then we'll come back over. We'll shut that off. We'll go to track two, play it back. the whole thing. 
every single track, okay? Separated, manipulate each one by itself when we're into the computer. It's what you want to do, trust me. All right, so how do we get it into the computer? There's another whole video on this, but once again, we're gonna run pin cord, mini pin to my microphone jack on my computer, the big guy, with one of those jobbers, into the headphone jack, and we're gonna play back, and one at a time, and record them. We've got everything recorded on the keyboard. We're gonna come over here now. I use Adobe Audition. You need something that can deal with a multi-track layout. Uh, I'm also gonna do a screen capture of everything, so let me start that. That way, if I'm pointing at something that's hard to see on this camera, we'll jump to an actual screen capture so I can show you. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna hit record, and then I'm gonna press play on the keyboard, and only do one track at a time. So here we go, and I'm gonna have to get up to do this, so. Ready, and record. You hear me walking, play. All right, so you hear that? That's the first track we recorded, just the piano track is coming in. Never ever want to see this. This can get as large as you want when you're recording, but it, it don't let it hit the tops and the bottom. Don't let it overdrive. You know, if you're looking at like, whatever program you're using will have something similar. Don't let it overdrive, don't let it hit red. Okay, anywhere else. Don't get too low, but if you overdrive, you get scratchy sounds, that's no good, so don't, don't do that. So there's some times where I'll start recording and then I'll start playing louder on what I recorded, have to stop everything, say, holy crap, that's way too loud, go over to the keyboard, lower the volume a little bit, and start the record again. All right, so there's that track. He's in there. Let's go back to the beginning. I'm going to record another track now. I'm going to shut him up. I'm going to hit mute on that because I don't want to hear that while I'm recording. So I'm going to record the second track, which I think, what, what did we do? The strings or something. So there we go. I muted what we just recorded. Record. I'm going to get up and walk. Hold on. And we're just going to play back the strings. We're not... Hold on. Let me come around. So now we're saying we're recording the strings. We are not worried about sync at this point. Not remotely, okay? See how those can get nice and high like that, but don't let them get right to the, right to the edge of that. It means you're getting too darn close to overdriving. No good. Okay, we're not worried about sync. Don't, can't do it all at once, you know? Now that the tracks are all in there, this is when, if you got any kind of hiss, play back each rhythm. If you hear a hissing sound, uh, that's when, whoa, too loud. That's when this is the best time to do it. individually on each track. I'm gonna remove hiss if I need to, and I'll go into hiss reduction. I have a filter for it here, but I would do that now before you get any further. Just every track, a little hiss reduction. If you hear anything coming on through the keyboard to the microphone, it's just best practices kind of thing is to get rid of that now. Okay, next thing is your sync, which without realizing I didn't know I was recording at the time, and I kind of already did that. So here's basically, if you have a program like this, it's very easy to move each track and get ourselves all synced up. Before I go any further, what I feel like I need is a high voice. Um, and you know, I kind of didn't have enough tracks on the keyboard. But now that they're all in here, I can record over one of those tracks to get some more stuff. I feel like I want a high voice, especially during the chorus. I'm gonna record one more track. And then I'll bring that track in, so it gives me a little bit more to work with here. Okay, since I decided to, I wanna add a high voice sound in there, I'm going to do vocal ENS, I don't know, an ensemble, 63. And I want to mingle that with 
that one that I enjoy all the way in the back numbers, what was it? 285. I have it written down, that's why I keep looking over there. Sorry, wrong song. So I want to add that. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to record over track five. That was my electric guitar sound. I'm just going to record over track five because it's on the computer now and just record this one. And then from there, once I have this layer in as five, I'm just going to record track five by itself into the computer. So we get that one additional one since really we have five in accompaniment, we need a sixth. It just happens to be that way. This song, I really want that extra one. I have done one where I've recorded 35 tracks for uh, my own CD, and it's a little pop-up on the bottom of every single video I do, it says Autumn Winds by Brian, but that's my CD that I wrote all that, put that together, you should check that out. Anywho, it's all made by this. So, let's just record this vocal track in. I'll play the melody, and then I'll play some of these extra little notes where she goes, that, that sound that Here we go with that. Okay, now let's just record that one track into the computer and go from there. Now that I've got everybody all in here, all the tracks, and I've labeled them, drum, piano, deep string, piano voice melody one, Melody to Stronger, Distorted Guitar, oops, and then my Octave Up voice. It's my high voice that I recorded. Okay. Now is the time when we go in and we adjust the volume levels of all these things. So what I like to do is I like to solo a couple at a time. So I like my drum rhythm, just that. Okay, and then I like to bring in just my piano melody, and let's get that balanced. That's not bad. Okay, I want to add in the string sound, so I'm going to bring the string, turn the string on. Now, whatever audio software you're doing, using, it's like anything for editing, it, it can always do the same stuff. Anything you're using can do what I'm doing. It's just a matter of how and where. So as I'm turning certain tracks on while leaving other tracks off, I'm doing this in Audition. I'm sure there's a newer, better software out there and it might be easier and this may be very archaic looking to you, but it's whatever you're comfortable using and you know, you'll be able to do this stuff. If it's a good software, you should be able to do what I'm doing here. So, anyway, turning back on another one. So now all I'm listening to is the piano rhythm, the drums, and the deep string, and I want to balance them out. Okay. That string is way too loud. see how I'm gonna shut the string off for a second and I'm gonna listen to the main uh, the, the simple piano melody and try to get that where I want it so let me see here kind of like that so I'll save you the time of watching all this crap but this part is basically now that we're in sync let's balance out the volume levels and that's something you can't do on the keyboard you know and certain things are hard to record too quiet or too loud because you don't know what the next track is going to be so that's why I like bringing stuff in onto here and now I can make very subtle adjustments to my volume levels so I'm going to do a whole bunch of that and we'll get back to you in just a moment so now everybody is volume mixed and also let me adjust my high voice here because 
it was a little obnoxiously loud at times, so it has all this little dips and stuff, so you, you hear it just at the right points. So let me, uh, here, let me solo that, uh, the drum rhythm, and the vocals, or melody track, so you can hear, see what some of these notes sound like. there, let it come back, oops, I didn't mean to stop it, let it come back, let it comes up for one spike, have fun with that, that's kind of cool to be able to, you know, this, you're not going to do that on the keyboard, keyboard can do a lot, like give us all this to work with, but now we get to play and have some fun, so the next thing I like to do is enhance this audio. So, for example, this is what the drums sound like recorded straight from the keyboard. Okay? Why not add a little reverb and some stuff? So let's, for example, let me come into... Bring this on this screen so you can see it better. Come into the graphic equalizer and ups, some of the, uh, some dips, some highs that I put in, and add a little reverb. So here, here, I'll play it without it, and then I'll play it with it, so you can hear the difference. So this is without the reverb on the drum. Okay, now I'll turn it on. Hear that? Because we're getting cooler. Okay? So I like to do that to a bunch of tracks. So I've already kind of played with some of these. So, But you really got to do it like this one without any equalizing. With it. You know, playing with a graphic equalizer as a filter is great. You can just give a little bit more to the highs, especially with the keyboards. You know, just, just give them a little more treble kind of kick to them. This one gave it a very subtle reverb. You can almost can't even hear the difference. It, it, it has a little tiny reverb to it, a little something. It, some stuff, it's so subtle, but if it's not there, you can almost notice it. So, a little equalizing on the vocal track here, uh, without, let me show you, without it, it sounded, well, let me go to a, a louder point. Without it, it was kind of, whoops, wrong button. It's kind of muffled, you know? It, it sounds okay when it's coming out of the speakers on the keyboard, but when I've recorded it in, it's a little bit muffled, so... I applied a graphic equalizer to it and just, just a little tiny increase on some of the some of the levels. And it just it just has a little more kick now to it. Okay. Uh, the distorted guitar. That was one that, you know, we're trying to create an electric guitar using a keyboard. It, it has some issues. <laughs> it's a little bit difficult. So, without anything, it sounded like this. Okay, I had a graphic equalizer, which you can see here I have a lot of stuff I played with. It's going to get louder in a second here as I get to the chorus right over here, and you'll we'll hear better. And then we added some reverb to it, a lot of reverb to it. See, it's kind of... It's okay, but now when I listen to the difference, I hit the reverb. Big difference. Okay? So now that we've got all these changes in place, I'm going to play it back, and you'll hear what we created uh, using the YPG and using some audio software to get all those tracks in and really kick them up a notch. So, here we go.
know what, for something I threw together just in a little bit longer than this video took, you know, it took me some time to go in and adjust things kind of off camera, but this this was kind of rushed and you know, that's a pretty full rocking sound coming from that keyboard. Now, that keyboard without this, just playing it back, it sounds pretty cool coming out of the keyboard. This makes it sound a little better, but it's still, either way, the keyboard really makes a very strong, loud sound, full sound when you really take advantage of all the tracks you can. And then if you bring it in something like this and really enhance it, add in some kind of reverbs and little adjustments, that's a pretty damn full rocking sound coming from a keyboard. So, just another reason why I love this keyboard. I really do. And that's why I, you know, I wrote and created an entire album using this keyboard. How about a little product placement? It pops up at the bottom of every one of my YouTube videos in the little corner. It says, hey, Autumn Wins. Album I wrote and made all of this music using the keyboard in this method. And this, and there's an album. So I'll put the link in the description or just look on my channel. It's the main video shows the Autumn Winds thing. You can hear a little demo and some of the music I wrote and uh, take the link and maybe sample that album. Help a guy out. But anyway, hope you enjoyed this. Hope you can, you know, use this kind of method stuff and record some of your own music. I'm out!